In Creo Parametric, you can incorporate dynamic entities into a mechanism dynamics analysis in order to create a more realistic simulation. Let's take a look at that. In a previous video, I created this CAM assembly and did a kinematic analysis. Let's take a look at the results of that. I will click on Applications and then Mechanism to get into Mechanism mode. Right now, my screen is a bit cluttered. Let's go to Mechanism Display and let's just turn off the display of everything. If I go to the Analyses folder in the Mechanism tree, I can use the green flag from the mini toolbar in order to rerun the kinematics analysis. And here you see is what I ended up with at the end of the previous video. I want something more realistic. So this time I'm going to incorporate springs and gravity and also initial conditions. To start off with, let's modify some of our components in order to define our zero references. I will click on the camshaft to begin with. Let's go to edit definition. And then on the placement tab, I can click on the rotation axis and I don't have any zero references selected. Let me turn on my datum plane display and I'm going to choose as my references. Let's make sure that we can click on the datum planes. Here I have the camshaft plane and the top plane. Right now there's zero degrees between them. I'm going to enable that as the regeneration value. I'm not going to set minimum and maximum limits because this should be able to rotate through 360 degrees. Now I will click on the check marks. That's good for that particular component. And when I incorporate gravity, these different valves are just going to fly away. So I want to prevent that. So I'm going to define some zero limits for them. Let's go to the exhaust valve, edit definition, and then placement tab, and then translation axis. I'm going to select the datum plane here, and then let's select the bottom surface of this particular part. I can see the separation right now is about 44. Let's enable minimum and maximum limits. I'll use a minimum value of zero and just value of 80 to begin with. And I'm just using really big values. I just want to prevent this from dropping away to infinity later on. I am not going to enable a regeneration value. Let's do the same thing for the intake valve. Click on it and then use edit definition, placement tab, translation axis, and I will use this particular datum plane and then pick a flat surface. And this value is negative, so I'm going to use a minimum and maximum limit of negative 80 and a maximum limit of zero. Let's hit the check mark. And now we can turn off the datum plane display. Let's move everything back to the middle of the screen. And the reason that I enabled a regeneration value is so that when I regenerate, everything goes to my zero location if it was out of whack. Then I can use the drag component icon to create a new snapshot. And I'm going to rename that snapshot to be called Start. Now let's click the close button out of the drag components dialog box. All right, the first thing that I am going to do to make the simulation more realistic, I am going to redefine the cams between the rockers and the valves to enable liftoff. To do that, I can select the icon in the graphics area and then use edit definition. And on the properties tab, here's a checkbox where we can enable liftoff because in the real world, these would be able to translate up and down. They're not attached to one another. Now I will click the OK button. Let's do the same thing for the cam on the other side. Edit definition and then go to properties and enable liftoff and then click the OK button. The next item that I will add for more realism is gravity. If I go to the ribbon, here we have a gravity icon. And be aware that you can only incorporate gravity if you have a license for MDO, the Mechanism Dynamics option. And so in the graphics area, I can see an arrow indicating the direction that gravity is going to act. 
you can use the different components of x, y, and z to define the direction. And here we have the magnitude in terms of millimeters per second per second. Let's click the OK button, and that corresponds to 1G. All right, let's see. Next thing I am going to define for, I'm going to go back to mechanism display, and I'm seeing way too much stuff. Let me turn off the local coordinate system display. All right, so the next thing that I want in here is to use some springs. In reality, there would be a spring attached to the valves, and then they would be connected to the cylinder head. I don't have the cylinder head in this particular model. I'm going to turn on my datum point display. We have points in each of the valve for where the spring would be attached. And then I have some points in my skeleton model that represents where the skeleton head would be. So to create a spring, we will click on the springs icon in the ribbon. And here we have the dashboard. You'll see that the references tab is in red indicating that we need to select the references to define the spring and the easiest way to do that is by selecting the points i will select one point hold down the control key and then select the other point and there you can see a preview of how the entity will display in the graphics area if you go to the options tab you can check the box to adjust the icon diameter let me try a really big value of 20. Again, you can see how it will preview on the computer screen. The next step that I typically do is define the rest length. In other words, at what length is there no energy in the spring? And I want it to be compressed at this point so that when the separation between the rocker and the surface in the valve happens, the spring is going to push it up. So it tells me right now there's a distance of 34 and some change between those two different points. I'm going to set the rest length to be greater than that. Let's use a value of 50. So again, the spring is going to act to move the valve up when separation happens. And next up, let's see, let's go to the let's define the k value and this is you can use the drop down list to change the units i'm going to use a value of 10 newtons per millimeter i'm just kind of making up values so i have some kind of force acting to push the entities together that's good let's hit the check mark and you can see the graphical display of the spring in the screen this does not create a component You'll notice here that we have a spring feature in the model tree. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's create a spring. I'll use the control key to select these two different points. Let's once again go to the options tab and adjust the diameter and use a value of 20. Let's use a rest length once again of 50 and a K value of 10 newtons per millimeter. Now I will hit the check mark and you can see the spring on the other side. So in order to show you the difference between the kinematic and dynamic analysis, well, let's run the kinematic analysis again. Once again, I'm going to turn off the display of all the different graphic entities. Let's also turn off our datum point display to unclutter the screen. And let me go to the analyses folder. First, before running it, I'm going to edit definition. And right now, this kinematic analysis is set to run for 16 seconds. The motor is set for nine, a velocity of 90 degrees per second, which means that we'll get four rotations over 16 seconds. I'm going to change this from using the current screen to using the snapshot that I created. And we have the motor running from start to end. So this is what you have when you define a kinematic analysis. When I hit the run button, yes, we'll overwrite the results. You'll notice that pushes the valves down and then they don't come back up because we enabled liftoff. So let's click the OK button for the kinematic analysis. Now we'll create a second analysis. After I click on the analysis folder, I will use the new icon from the mini toolbar. Let me change the name to 
dynamic to indicate this is my dynamic analysis. Then from the type dropdown list, I will change from the default position analysis, which is the old kinematic solver, to dynamic. And then for preferences, let's change the duration to 16 seconds. I always like to increase the frame rate. And oops, I forgot to define an initial condition. Let me cancel out of here real quick. If I go to the initial conditions icon, here we can change the name. I'm going to leave the default name. And I'm going to use the drop down list to say that I want to use that snapshot as my initial condition. For a dynamic analysis, you can incorporate other entities for your initial conditions like velocity at a point, motion axis velocity. You can also do angular velocity, slot uh, tangential velocity, and what's the last one over here? It is uh, oh to evaluate the conditions that you define. But again, I'm just using a snapshot for the initial condition. Let's go back to analyses and create our dynamic analysis. Once again, let's change the duration and the frame rate. I'm not going to lock any entities. And now let's use the radio button to use our initial condition. Now we will go to the motors tab. The single motor is going to run from start to end. But here with a dynamic analysis, we have the ability to activate the external loads tab. And in this case, I'm going to enable gravity. I didn't define friction for the cams, so there's really no point in enabling that. Now I'll click the run button and you can see that they are maintaining contact and when this finishes running I'm going to enable the, the display of one of the mechanism entities. Let's go to springs in here. There you can see the representation. Let me run that again. Let's go to the dynamic analysis and use the green flag. Yes, let's overwrite the results and you can see that when you have the dynamic analysis and these different spring entities, they actually animate during the run so you can see them compress and actually push the valves back up. So by incorporating gravity and the springs, I'm ending up with a much more realistic simulation. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.